I know, I'm surprised that this is a thing too. Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Payne, talking about yet another anime show or movie that you've never heard of before. An anime show or movie that, before finding out what this is, I've never heard of before. And me talking about it, because why the hell not? No, but if I'm, uh, if I'm gonna be serious, there is an actual reason to this. <laughs> so about a couple of weeks ago, there were, I had a couple of friends on Discord who were talking about all these different sh random shit, and one of the things that was brought up was that there was a couple of anime movies and a manga that was adapted from other stuff, and we had no idea that this was an actual thing. I'm not going to mention the other two stuff. One of them was this movie, uh, but then there's a couple other stuff. I don't even know if I'll talk about them at all. One of them's a manga, so I doubt I'm going to talk about it, but one of them just really piqued my interest, and it ended up being this movie, so I told my friends, hey, I'm going to watch this movie. This was about a week and a half ago, so I sat with this for like a few days, and then just as you know, as everyone was getting ready to go to bed, this is about like 11 at night, I decided to go on my phone, because there is no legal place to watch this, and decided to watch this movie, and it's been stuck in my head ever since, and my opinion is, is that there's the only way to get out of my head is to talk about it in a video. So, yeah, the past the time <laughs> until I review, uh, what was it, the next Ghibli film, My Neighbor Diamondus? I don't know, I'm basically just waiting for Spirit in a way at this point. Uh, here is the one and the only Anne No Nikki or The Diary of Anne Frank. This movie was co-directed by Akinori Nagaoka and Toshiya Shinohara, written by Ryuzo Nakanishi. It was made by a studio Madhouse. One of the many things that, uh, that they've made over the years. I've started growing just as a fan of Madhouse for the directors that they get and the stuff they come out. Uh, unlike this movie, it came out on August 19th, 1995 in Japan. With an hour and 12, my mistake, an hour and 42 minute runtime, 102 minutes long. Uh, it was supposed to have a North American release in 2015, supposedly, but we haven't really gotten any info about that. So, yeah, last resort, look it up illegally. I don't, I could not find another place for it. All right, to give some people some context about what exactly The Diary of Anne Frank is about, uh, you know, for people who really don't know what the story is about, or for people who knew what it was but just forgot about it because. You probably only heard the story in grade school. The Diary of Anne Frank, or uh, its actual title, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, is said to be one of the most powerful and important works of literature in modern history. The diary started in June of 1942 as it follows a Jewish teenage girl named Anne Frank as she is cooped up in an attic with eight other people, including her family and close friends, during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands during World War II and they are cooped up in the attic due to seeing a number of people taken away to concentration camps around Europe due to their Jewish beliefs. But before she went into hiding, she got a diary for her 13th birthday, and she ended up calling that book Kitty. She recorded everything in that book with great detail over the next two years, as she believed that Kitty was the only place where she could go to let her innermost thoughts out about everyone else, from her good relationship with her father, to her not-so-good relationship with her mother, to a close relationship with a boy named Peter, the son of another family living in the attic, although it was never revealed if anything really was going on between both of them. Then in 1944, she was unfortunately found by Nazi forces and was killed sometime between February and March of 1945 in northern Germany from typhus just a few weeks before the Allied forces liberated the concentration camp that she was in. The only person that survived the liberation was Anne's father, Otto Frank who was given the diary that she left behind by one of the people that helped kept the group hidden from the Nazis during that time, just after the war was over in 1945. And ever since, the book has been published in 260 languages and has been adapted numerous times, starting with a play in 1952, which was then adapted into the most famous example in 1959, the first film adaptation, which won three Oscars, and the most recent example, which is, ironically enough, a movie made in Germany. But when it comes to the timeless story of Anne Frank and the trials that she went through, I never in my entire life thought that it would ever be adapted into an anime film. But after watching this, I kinda wish it never did. My main complaint with this film is the directing. Because even though I believe that this movie was made with good intentions, the directing was crap. The only best case scenario that I, that I could give uh, the directors while they were making this film is that, you know, they were on board with Madhouse in trying to make a very serious film, but as a source of inspiration, they went to the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam and the Holocaust Museum, and they both just went through a mental downward spiral 
all throughout the production of this movie because about half of this movie just felt very, very uninspired and creatively lacking. One constant reminder of how uninspired this movie is is the fact that most of this movie is all in the same wide angle of all the people sitting at their dining table. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, all movies where they have one still wide shot is bad. It's just that in this instance, it's done very poorly compared to uh, other films that does this well as it gives the viewer, you know, things to look at or things to feel. This movie just had none of that. The, the picture that I'm showing up right here, yeah, this shot of them at the table, that's about like 50 to 55% of this movie. Not only does it feel like you're watching a play with these wide shots, but there's also multiple instances where these wide shot scenes are stretched out for time, even in certain scenes such as like, you know, when Anne gets her diary at the beginning of the movie, or when people in the attic would have arguments between different characters, which brings me to the only complaint I have with the dialogue, which is that with every argument, they are very strangely informative. Like the directors couldn't find another way to release all this information that needs to be known in this film except through these arguments in these long wide shots at the table. But as much as I'm pissed about the wide shot thing, and you're probably gonna hear me talk about that a couple of more times, overall the directing wasn't that bad as, you know, in any scene that's not a wide shot that is presumed to be peaceful, ends up actually being suspenseful. Like, there is one scene in the middle of the night where, you know, they're up in the attic and there's a guy that breaks into the house, into the lower floors of the building, and almost discovers the secret door to the attic. Or when there are shots outside of Amsterdam, these beautiful set pieces of Amsterdam. But then, when you get closer to showing one of the characters going back to the attic on the ride home, they show shots of people being forced to go into the back of trucks by Nazi forces. Scenes like that are pretty effective if you understand the historical context behind the scene and the overall historical context of the film. Hell, to be honest, even when the Nazis are on screen, it is pretty uneasy. You get an uneasy feeling, and that's a part of the film that I think this movie did really well, was in some cases, they captured the authenticity of it. The problem is, they didn't capture it in all of it. Adding on to the animation, again, just the outside shots were beautiful and really captured both the peace and the terror of the time period. But when it came to the characters, what Madhouse was aiming for was that they were going to have the characters look like their real-life counterparts. And in this case, it worked. But the problem was, is that it worked way too well. So well, in fact, that it looks really, really creepy. Like, you're watching dolls come to life, arguing with each other over a fucking wide shot. I'm sorry, I need to, I need to clear my mind over that goddamn directing flaw. Okay, the director, the other stuff that he's made are fucking kids shows. So, I can kind of understand why there's, why, why this was made. I... It's still inexcusable. I mean, good lord. The music was done by a guy that I'm 99.9% .9 sure that you've never heard of before. A guy by the name of Michael Nyman who mainly makes film and opera music and has actually, actually has a couple of his well-known tracks from the soundtrack for this film, but when it's implemented into the film, there are some tracks that make the film very monotonous, while there are certain tracks that were just very breathtaking to listen to. There are some tracks that, you know, stand alone. I actually listened to a couple of his tracks, a couple well-known ones. They're actually pretty decent, but, you know, you implement them into the film, they're either a hit or miss. Also, while looking up some stuff about the film, there was also a time where a number of French companies actually tried to revive the film by cutting 20 minutes of it, replace the music, and add more dialogue to the film already into the one hour and 20 minute film, which just condense more into it. But due to the number of times that the visuals clash with the music and the new stuff, from what I've heard, this new version is actually more entertaining than the original version. Which makes me realize that I wasted an hour and 40 minutes watching this when I could have been watching an hour and 20 minutes slightly better French version of this film, only that I don't know French. But then again, life is a series of choices. When I was introduced to the story of Anne Frank, I was in the eighth grade in the middle of a two week long curriculum on the Holocaust where I went to numerous classes every day with the only reason that the school could give me or my parents was literally a long version of the 
quote, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it, which is absolutely not true at all. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, trying to look back at what I specifically learned during that time is pretty tough because let's face it, it was just two weeks taken out of the school year where my school was cramming depressing shit down my throat. That's what this film felt like. An hour and 40 minutes of depression with no overall merit and staying power. And it actually is very disappointing. Like I said earlier, this film had potential. This film uh, had a lot of people who wanted to make a decent adaptation out of this. It's just, you know, I, I don't know if there was a, like, a creative difference or anything between the directors and the studio, but just something didn't go right during the production process. Uh, and if I had to guess, just the directors weren't on the right side. And keep in mind, it was Nagaoka uh, who was the one who worked on a bunch of kids' shows, and I just assumed the second director was just on his side. I just, something happened here. I just, it just didn't turn into anything memorable. Uh, if anything, it was, um, I tried my best to try and write as much as I can for the script, some of the stuff that I could find. There were some potential, again, in making a film that tried, that would at least try to capture the emotions that Anne was feeling, or anybody who was in that attic in Amsterdam for over two years was feeling, in addition to staying true to the original source material, which is one of the main things that this movie did, was staying true to the original source material. Uh, again, creative differences probably would have been the case because there was just so many missed chances and opportunities for this film to be recognized by more than just you know, random people like me who decided to watch movies from the 90s. There was a lot of chances for it to be good or decent from the animation to the characters to the story, how it was presented, and what would have been a passable adaptation of a piece of history instead became a piece of work that in my opinion was so bad that it was almost insulting. And because of that, I'm gonna give Anno Nikki a four. Out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any videos that I've made in the past, there's videos on the screen and down in the description and channel. If you want to see uh, any videos that I make on the future, there is a subscribe button on the screen and also down on the channel as well. My name is Payne, and I'll hopefully see you in very soon.